Israel has become this bugbear issue and part of the basket of what it means to be on the left, I understand. What I don't understand is the obsessive role that it seems to play within the Western imagination and among these people and how it has become this organizing principle, if you will, of large parts of society. And, and I'm asking this because as I try as a spokesman to try to speak to foreign media and to try to influence public opinion, I'm simply at a loss to try to understand what this, uh, pardon me, psychotic moment is that seems to have overtaken such large parts of the well, Western world. Well, you can tell one thing by the manner of communication, and this is, if I can say, it's a quite an important point. That manner of communication betrays something very interesting. That isn't argument, is it? What they're doing? No. Right. What is it? It's very performative. It's performative. What else? It's performative. It seems impulsive, emotional. It seems to come from the gut. I would say it, it certainly doesn't come from the brain. Um, it's, uh, it's a different form of communication from, for instance, the one we're having at the moment. We are in, involved in a dialogue right now, and that's what most people I know, certainly everyone I respect, is able to engage in. If I just sat here and said, cease fire now, or whatever, just over and over again, you say, yeah, you said it once, I got it. Why do these people think if they keep bludgeoning people with their stupid, predictable, ill-informed opinions, that we're going to suddenly say, ah, oh, now I get it, we should have a ceasefire, or whatever it is. I oh, think they're trying to apply amazing. political pressure, and if you put enough pressure and mobilize enough people, then that's how change is made. That's what they think. That's what is they think, and they may be right. They may be right. They may be right that people can be influenced by that form of communication. I personally think it's the worst possible form of communication because I don't think it is communication. It is a, a bludgeoning of people with very of people by people who have a very very limited understanding of these things, and that is, by the way, one other giveaway of it. If they understood anything about this you wouldn't just keep saying the same thing over and over. You wouldn't decide every Saturday to just chant the same banality. If The reason they do it is because if you go underneath it, as you and I know from the people who go through the protests and ask any follow-on question, none of the marchers, almost none, would be able to answer a follow-on question. So they stick with the boring, ill-informed mantra and they hope that they will persuade us by it. And I hope that it doesn't work. By the way, I think if that's anything, it's a silver lining that when you see people in the West chanting intifada, intifada, and everyone gets stressed saying these people are calling for suicide bombings on public transport, because that's what the intifada was in Israel. Yeah. Actually, the fact that they don't know what an intifada is, right. and they're operating out of, out of ignorance rather well, than that's malice, a, that's is comforting, a, Yeah, perhaps. absolutely. I mean, that, that is a striking thing as well. I mean, if I was to spend my Saturday chanting for something, I'd like to think that I'd know what the word meant. Like you'd think that would be a, a starting place. I mean, you get these people, who, they, they, they have their banners, and then, you know, somebody says, uh, you know, what does the thing on your banner mean? And, oh, I don't know. But somebody just gave it to me. Like, what, what kind of moron are you? I, w would you or I spend our time walking around with banners some other guy we've never met gave us? Why? What's wrong with you people? So I want to pick your brains about a segment of public opinion in the West that I think actually do know what they're talking about. And, and that is actually the large, um, not a majority, but certainly noticeable, Jewish mobilization against Israel among elements of the ultra-progressive left-wing uh, well, Jewish they're, public they're, opinion. They're, they're totally unimportant. Why do you think they're unimportant? Well, because everyone knows they're maniacs. I mean, they're, they're, it's like uh, queers for Palestine. It's, it's like, okay, you know, chickens for KFC, all that kind of stuff. These people are so clearly deluded. The people who are doing uh, Jews for Palestine at the moment are the same th the people who did uh, Kaddish for Hamas in Parliament Square a few years ago. Remember that? We have a little clip, actually, from ah. the recent protests. Let's um, watch and see. On the steps of the Foreign Office here in London. Yeah, they're chanting, not in our name. They're marching for a ceasefire. And we see them now. Again, you were saying, talking about performative theater. Here they are wearing all the Jewish religious garments. The talit, the tefillin, blowing the shofar. The uh, COVID masks are not traditional uh, uh, Jewish garments, but they've made their way into, into yeah, here I, as well. The, the, uh, I like the green-haired one. The, the, that's, yes. uh, that's definitely not a lunatic. A regular occurrence. Yeah. I, and yeah. I wonder, I mean, these people... 
You know, these protesters have to have a name for them, and I have the perfect name. It's the acronym I always use, SIMR, S-I-M-R. Stupid, idiotic, moronic, and retarded. Not to mention that these people are now culturally appropriating. Why is it okay? Why is it not okay when anybody else culturally appropriates? And there is no such thing as cultural appropriation. That's just some stupid politically correct terminology that the woke left, the social justice warriors, these virtue signaling liberal elite hypocrites throw out there to try to throw everybody on the right and conservatives off balance. It's just another way of saying, you're racist, you're bigoted, you're homophobic, you're Islamophobic, you're Jewophobic, you're Palestinian phobic, you're this phobic, 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 phobic. That's all it is, folks. That's all it is. But when the left culture appropriates, like over here, they're singing. They're singing Jewish songs. They're dressing up in Jewish clothing. They're using Jewish instruments, and the clothing isn't even right. These guys wouldn't know the first thing about being a Jew if they had the textbook, if they had the, if they had the, if they had the, if they had the Old Testament in their hands, if they had the Torah in their hands, if they had a book, you know, Jewish for dummies, they still wouldn't understand the first thing. And that's true. These guys have not a single clue as to what they're doing. They just go out there and they march on a weekend, nothing better to do, on a weekday, take the day off from school, skip class, go out into the main concourse of a college university, meet up with a bunch of the other stupid, idiotic, moronic, retarded idiots, and think that they've done something to change the world because they do performative theater and sing some chants, blow into some music, musical horns, play some instruments, pretend to be Jewish for a few minutes. It's unbelievable, folks, unbelievable. And, you know, Douglas has these people pegged absolutely perfect. They're not worth a damn thing. And they're going to, whatever it is that they're going to try to uh, in the short term, it may work slightly in the short term with the people that they're preaching to their own choir, but it certainly is not going to help in the long term with anybody else, folks. Anyways, this is what we have on tap for you today, folks. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow. You all know what to do. Let's get back to more of Douglas Murray and his interview right now about that not completely ignorant so what is motivating them to mobilize against israel when someone like you who is not jewish comes from the outside does see our side of the story well um look every community has its lunatics i mean i mentioned queers for palestine i've been saying for a while that queers for palestine are just the gay notori carter um uh <laughs> Uh, every, every community has their people for suicide. Okay, fine, you die. Uh, can't take anyone else with you. Uh, so, so yeah, everybody has this people. As for uh, the specific thing of some of the Jews, look, you can be an anti-Zionist Jew. I mean, there are plenty of people and always have been historically who have been. Um, I mean, if you read Weizmann's memoirs, uh, the, 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 the Board of Deputies in England at the time of the foundation of this state were opposed, of course, to the foundation of the state. And very wisely came around. A bit. No, they have, they have, they have. Uh, I, well, the Board of Deputies is not known for its uh, strength on the question of Israel. But anyway, the point is, is simply that there is a, tra a trail, there is a, there is a trail of, 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 of um, skepticism on, on this in the diaspora, let's say. Uh, okay. Some of that's understandable. Certainly it was understandable in the past. I don't think it's pretty understandable now, but okay. You do not have to go from I'm a Jew who isn't a Zionist to I'm a Jew who says morning prayers for Hamas. Like that. That's the point when you turn into psychosis. These, these are sick, sick people. 
and uh, fine, we've had them always historically. You know, the, uh, the, every Jew knows that there have been bad Jews. It's not, um, uh, it, it, it's not a surprise to me. Every community has bad people in it and evil people and people who wish the rest of the community very, very significant harm. And um, which, is, which is disturbing analysis because these people, I'm sure, would also push back and say that they believe they are acting out of the noblest values. They believe they well, are doing good. No one ever says good. that I know I'm acting from evil. I mean, you have to believe you think you're doing good in order to do something wicked, um, as well as to do something good. No, I, I mean, these, um, I, I don't find these Jewish fringe, fringe figures of any significance. I think there are two groups in the West who are significant. I think that there is the green bit of the Green Red Alliance, what we saw there. Uh, which, the climate movement? No, not just the climate movement. There's the leftist movement. Okay. Um, the ones who, yeah, again, they, they get their politics off the shelf. You can predict 100% certainty what the sort of things they'll say before they say them. And on the question of the Middle East, they will think it's all about the Palestinians, two states or whatever. Um, th those people are a fringe in politics in every country who always have a risk, as with the Democrats in America, of becoming slightly more mainstream. That's the first part of the anti-Israel movement in the West. The second, and the much more worrying to my mind, and the much more difficult to talk about for most people, is the Muslim anti-Semitism, which is very, very hard for Jews or non-Jews to identify, but it's without question the main driver now. The marches, the video you saw, videos we just saw weren't very representative of them, but the marches in London are mainly Muslim. They are Pakistani Muslims and others who arrived in Britain in recent generations and brought the anti-Semitism of their homeland with them. Are they still really mainly Muslim marches or are you not seeing a lot of white Britons as well? Appreciate you all taking the time to watch our video. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. And if you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow. So you all know what to do. Take a look at our other video links above and below. Share your thoughts and comments. And I'll leave with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.